Hello. Our devotion for today is entitled, God is with us. And it is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 1 through 18. The prophet writes, But now hear, O Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord who made you, who formed you from the womb, and will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water on the thirsty land, and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. They shall spring up among the grass like willows by flowing streams. This one will say, I am the Lord's. Another will call on the name of Jacob and another will write on his hand the Lord's and name himself by the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and the last. Besides me, there is no God. Who is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and set it before me. Since I appointed an ancient people, let them declare what is to come and what will happen. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? And you are my witnesses. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. All who fashion idols are nothing, and the things they delight in do not profit. Their witnesses neither see nor know that they may be put to shame. Who fashions a god or casts an idol that is profitable for nothing? Behold, all his companions shall be put to shame, and the craftsmen are only human. Let them all assemble. Let them stand forth. They shall be terrified. They shall be put to shame together. The ironsmith takes a cutting tool and works it over the coals. He fashions it with hammers and works it with his strong arm. He becomes hungry, and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The carpenter stretches a line. He marks it out with a pencil. He shapes it with planes and marks it with a compass. He shapes it into the figure of a man, with the beauty of a man to dwell in a house. He cuts down cedars, or he chooses a cypress tree or an oak, and lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a cedar, and the rain nourishes it. Then it becomes fuel for a man. He takes part of it and warms himself. He kindles a fire and bakes bread. Also, he makes a god and worships it. He makes it an idol and falls down before it. Half of it he burns in the fire. Over the half he eats meat. He roasts it and is satisfied. Also he warms himself and says, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. And the rest of it he makes into a god, his idol, and falls down to it and worships it. He prays to it and says, Deliver me, for you are my god. They know not nor do they discern, for he has shut their eyes, so they cannot see, and their hearts, so they cannot understand. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 5, it is written, I am the Lord's. That's how life really is, the prophet says. When God has poured out his Spirit, When everything is as it should be, this will be our greatest joy, that God exists and that we belong to him, live in his presence, and take part in his joy. 
But it's not like that right now. In this fallen world, people tend to take one of two completely incorrect positions in their behavior toward God. The first one is to make their own God. The prophet gives us a drastic and mocking description of this. A man forges and carves, chops down the trees, and cuts up the wood. He uses part of it as fuel, and he makes the rest of it into a god. A part of the wood ends up in the fire, and before the rest of it, he falls down on his knees and says, Deliver me. We must remember that during the prophet's lifetime, centuries before Jesus was born, this was accepted behavior for the cultured and the powerful in the world. It was what everyone did. Everyone except for one reluctant race of people on the edge of ruin who persisted in believing that their invisible God was Lord of the whole world. The other incorrect attitude is probably the most common one in our day. It is portrayed by the prophet Isaiah when he describes the proud of Babylon. There was a particular mentality in this presumptuous city, the coddled and the extravagant. They appeared so confident and secure. It can be expressed in the words, I am and there is no one besides me. Isaiah chapter 47, verse 8. This is one of the signs of unbelief throughout time. The assumption of being alone, of being in possession of your own life, a life that has received its breath by accident, only to be snuffed out for all eternity in a world without meaning, with no binding standards or goals. Sometimes we find ourselves between these two viewpoints. We might not believe in God, but we still have a foggy suspicion that there is a power that steers this world. The prophet Isaiah describes how the Babylons measured the heavens and looked at the stars and at every new moon would attempt to predict their fate. Chapter 47, verse 13. Now in our day, we read our horoscopes half jokingly, and yet with a dark fear of unknown powers. A last crude, distorted reminder of the correct perception that we are not alone. The truth is, is that we don't exist by chance. At the essence of our lives and also of the whole universe, there is a good will. We need not grope around in the darkness and attempt to create for ourselves a picture of this strange power that upholds everything. Because God has revealed himself in his word. He comes to us in the sacraments. We hear his voice. Yes, there's a very good reason for God creating us. Let us pray. My God and Father, we thank you because we can call you Father. We thank you because we can talk with you. We thank you because we know you are not just a power that rules over everything or hides your purposes and intentions from us. You share your life and your joy, the joy of existence and the infinite wealth in your kingdom. And since we belong to you and are a part of your work, we pray that you let these words remain written on our minds and in our hands. The Lord's own. We pray to you for thoughts like this, for desires like this, and for deeds like this, so our whole life and character witnesses to how good it is to belong to you. Praise be to your name that we have the opportunity to do it. Jesus, in your holy name we pray. Amen. God's blessings. I'll see you next time.